Sean in Edison, New Jersey. I came across a match on YouTube between the Nasty Boys and the Legion of Doom taped on the Arsenio Hall show. Do you have any memory of this? And if so, what did you think of it? Not only did I not have any memory of this when I got Sean's email, I don't think I ever saw this before until now. So I have to thank him because it's the first time I had ever watched this. And I thought I had seen all of the Arsenio segments because you can find most of them online. Arsenio used to have so many WWE personalities on his show. Macho Man and the Million Dollar Man. One of the funnier ones. You got to track it down. He had <laughs> he had the, the, the slick, Slickster and the Twin Towers. Uh, Boss Man and Akeem on his show in character, totally in character. You've got to track that down and watch that. It is, it's just, they stayed in character the entire time. Some of the things that were said, it's just unbelievable. You'd never see anything like that now. But anyway, so I, I found the video here that Sean was, was talking about. And there's a ring in the studio. It has a Survivor Series ring skirt. This was taped on November 21st, 1991. So that was a week before the Survivor Series pay-per-view, which is why they were there. They were there to promote the Survivor Series. Uh, the announce team for this match is unbelievable. Arsenio Hall and Jake the Snake Roberts in a suit and tie, no less. Jake is in a suit and a tie. He's got an earring in one ear. The same Jake the Snake who was in the middle of arguably his best heel run in the company. Only a few days later is when the segment aired on television, the snake bite incident, where the snake bit the macho man. Gnawed away at Randy Savage's arm. And there he is, sitting in a suit and tie next to Arsenio Hall. Jake was supposed to wrestle on that pay-per-view. He was supposed to wrestle at Survivor Series. Uh, he was the captain, in fact, of a team that would have had IRS and the Natural Disasters, which just doesn't seem right, that he, you know, he was going to team with Earthquake, he was going to team with Earthquake the same year that he made Quake Burgers out of Damien. Come on. But they were going to face the team of Sid Justice, the Big Boss Man, and the Legion of Doom. Sid suffered uh, that fall a bicep injury, I guess a bicep tear, and he was taken out of the show. In fact, uh, it was originally going to be Sid, not Randy Savage in that spot. He was, Sid was going to be the one to get bitten by the King Cobra. You know, people forget that it was really the feud at that time. Even though, you know, they crashed the the wedding party with Savage and Liz, that's really how that whole thing got started. It was Sid who made the save in that segment, and the feud coming out of that, Savage was still not suspended, but he had retired. He was doing commentary. He wasn't an active wrestler. The feud was going to be Jake and Sid, not Jake and Randy Savage. So that's Snakebite. Assuming Sid would have agreed to it, I don't know if he was as crazy as Macho was, was originally going to be Sid getting bitten on the arm by that snake. You know, and, and to think, one of my favorite feuds almost didn't happen were it not for that injury. There's no way that feud would have worked nearly as well if it had been Sid in that spot. But anyway, Mean Gene Okerlund is there. And Mean Gene handles the ring announcing. They even had a member of the Temptations. This guy, Ollie Woodson, comes out. He sings the national anthem like this is some big sporting event. The fucking Super Bowl here in this little studio. Mean Gene sits down to do play-by-play. -play. What a three-man booth. The three-man booth I bet you never knew existed. Mean Gene Okerlund, Jake the Snake Roberts, and Arsenio Hall. Still better than Michael Cole, Corey Graves, and Renee Young. Hawknail sags with a clothesline at one point. Arsenio drops this line. I couldn't believe he said this. He hits the clothesline. Arsenio goes, oh, that's the move they use on Rodney King. Could not believe my ears. I would have expected that on WWE television, to be honest with you, but I wouldn't have expected that out of Arsenio's mouth. Even Jake. I think about that, right? Jake the Snake is on commentary going, jeez. <laughs> he heard that line. Uh, LOD wins with the Doom, well, of course they do. They win with the Doomsday device. Jake gets angry. He pulls the King Cobra out of the bag. He cuts a promo on LOD from afar. Arsenio gets the fuck out of Dodge. He doesn't want any part of that snake. I don't blame him. And then, as he's throwing it to Kamurda, there's all this chaos and havoc and pandemonium, and Arsenio's walking away, and he's throwing it to commercial as they're going over a break. He goes, we'll be right back with Howie Mandel and Bill Cosby. So uh, Jake may not have been the biggest heel in the building that night. 
You know, somebody in the comments section made a point about how Arsenio should be in the celebrity wing of the uh, WWE Hall of Fame. He's not wrong. He really isn't. I thought they would have put Regis Philbin in there by now. You know, Regis is, he was a, a good friend to them, and he had a lot of wrestlers on his show at a time when his show, you know, in the daytime was very popular. That's another thing you should look up on YouTube. Some of these old Regis and Kathy Lee episodes are unbelievable. You see these guys in character. Fucking Mr. Fuji and Yoko Zuna walk out there on Regis and Kathy Lee. You know, the, the Undertaker and Paul Bear. Full character. They're out there on Regis and Kathy Lee. And it's like, you watch these things. Ultimate Warrior was on there. Raving Psycho. I mean, some of these interviews are just unbelievable. And, uh, and they're all on YouTube. But I would have expected Regis to be, uh, you know, honored by now for all the exposure he gave them. Arsenio did the same. You got to give the guy credit. He had a ton of WWF guys on his show over the years, including, well, I mean, he had that one interview, I guess, the uh, infamous interview with Hulk Hogan that they probably would not want to show highlights of, where uh, he was supposed to be coming on the show to admit all these newspaper stories were in the news. This was when the steroid thing was blowing up in, in the early 90s. And Hogan was at the heart of it. And I think Arsenio and his producers were expecting, we got the scoop, Hogan's going to come out, he's going to admit and tell the story about his steroid use, and boy, did they not get what they were hoping for. Hogan changed his mind right before he walked out, did a 180. I only took steroids three times in my life. In 1983, I was the champion. He wasn't, by the way, he was the champion in 84. But I only took it to heal an injury. You can see the guy's nose grow by 20 feet during that interview and him coming out and lying on Arsenio Hall did the company no favors at that time that was a bad bad day at the office for Hulk Hogan and, and for WWF a bad look for them and that happened on our Arsenio show that one they could probably just leave alone but if they ever put a video package together they certainly have a lot of other highlights they could be showing of uh, all the wrestlers that went on his show. I guess Arsenio, like Regis now, they're kind of old news now to WWE, right? They're not big enough celebrity names for them to really do anything with. And it's, uh, it's a shame. You think of people like them, you think of Cindy Lauper. Uh, maybe it's her choice. Maybe, maybe she just, I mean, she's done stuff with WWE since. She was on Raw a few years ago with Wendy Richter. But uh, those are some names I think that if you're going to honor different celebrities, I think they deserve to be honored.